do quantum effects bubble up sufficiently into our biology to meaningfully impact our behavior? Not a chance. Um, and people like uh, mathematician Max Tagmark at MIT did some like off of the envelope calculations once that like quantal effects would have to bubble up 23 orders of magnitude to have the remotest impact on one molecule. So anything in which all that's going to happen is all of that quantum indeterminacy has to happen to spin in all of the particles in the right direction in every single ion channel molecule, in every single atom of this, in every single 80 billion neurons there in order to produce something coming out the other end. And besides the fact that it is statistically beyond the possibility that they would all just happen to do the same thing at the same time, um, the term given in the field is the brain is going to like do in the quantum indeterminacy of it is going to quench it um, because the brain is, as they say, a wet, noisy space. Tissue, living biological stuff is very prone towards quenching quantum effects because you get all sorts of noisy, like messy chemical stuff happening there. So you're, you're not going to get stuff bubbling up in order to affect behavior. Issue number one. Number two, even if you did, you got a problem because if quantum indeterminacy bubbled up far enough to influence behavior, it would be generating randomness. It would not be generating the moral compass that defines you or something like that. It would be producing randomness. Um, Sam Harris has said, like, if quantum indeterminacy had something to do with our behavior, we would spend all of our time saying, I have no idea why I just said that. Um, except we wouldn't be saying that, I point out, because we'd all be choking to death on our saliva because our muscles would be all random and disorganized in their movements and our throat and stuff. Yeah, it's a mechanism for randomness. And like even like the most ardent compatibilist out there says, we're not saying quantum mechanics is how you get there because that's a prescription for randomness and that's not what we're trying to explain. Um, the third problem is sort of the last Hail Mary thing that these folks do, which is they say, aha, you can have harnessing of the quantum indeterminacy. Somehow the upper emergent level allows you to reach down and futz around with those little indeterministic subatomic particles and tell them to do this or to do that. Another version of downward causality that doesn't actually work that way. It requires not only that you could reach down and as soon as an ant colony is formed, all the ants become smarter. It now requires as soon as quantum indeterminacy bubbles up high enough you can now reach down and make all that indeterminacy work to your own pleasure and like financial reward. It, it requires a mechanism for it that is simply not there, something that gets referred to as hard downward causality, which almost certainly cannot exist. And yeah, so it's not going to affect your behavior. Even if it is, it would do it randomly. And the only way to get around that is to somehow say that you could think your way to be able to con control your quantal events down there. And yeah, it doesn't do that. You mentioned uh, that even the most ardent compatibilist won't even appeal to that second sort of randomness as being a source of free will. And it just so happens that I'm recalling a, a, a a passage in Dan Dennett's uh, book, Freedom Evolves, in which he uh, agrees with you. He, he quotes, I think, ah, this okay. ancient, well, this ancient thinker, Lucretius, who pointed out that even if a random atom swerving in your head causes some shift in behavior, we don't want to call that your free will. That's just a total accident caused by this swerving atom. Yeah, because we're trying to explain like moral character. 
we're trying to explain like those of us where it doesn't matter how many dollar bills are sticking out of the person's wallet that they've dropped, you're still going to run after them to give it back to them. That, yeah, we're trying to explain consistency. We're, we're, we're trying to explain that if everyone decides that you're a swell person um, at your funeral, you're going to come up with your oldest friend who could come up and say, yeah, even when they were in kindergarten, they were already that sort of person. The last thing you want to get with compatibilism is randomness. You're trying to explain like where our moral fiber comes from, and that's all built around consistency. So yeah, Danny, Dennett, and I sure agree that like quantum indeterminacy is not the way to get there. Yeah, and then by that same token with this sort of downward causation, I think is what you referred to it, is if we sort of rig up some quantum random number generator that's going to, and we assign like restaurants to each number, uh, and we sort of farm out the decision to the quantum random number generator, and it tells us we're getting Italian, we also don't want to say that that was like... uh that randomness is a source of free will in any sense. Yeah. Um, you're not showing free will if you're behaving randomly. You're not showing free will if you're doing the exact opposite of what you think they want you to do. If you turn out to be exactly like your parents, that has been the deterministic event. If you've turned out to have said, God help me, I'll kill myself if I wind up in any way like my parents and do just the opposite, that is just the deterministic yeah, and all of these cases, randomness is not gonna not gonna save you. I wonder if you're thinking of there was this TED talk by this like tech guy who decided to use an algorithm to decide where he would go to a restaurant or what concerts he would go to, and eventually he took it to the point of like what city on earth he would move to for three months, and it was interesting. But yes, that was not producing a stable philosophy in in him either. Yeah. The ramp is just not the way to do it. So, in any case, um, yeah, randomness is not the way to go. That's as ridiculous as somebody like saying I had to.